proceed with the rest of this podcast, we want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Stamps.com. Ooh, Ooh Stamps.com. Yeah, stamps.com. George, what is Stamps.com? Well, so many things are on demand these days. Uh, you can get this podcast anywhere you want, but you still have to go to the po- post office for things. Isn't that weird, guys? That's crazy town. Except now, with Stamps.com, you can do anything you can do at the post office, right at your home office. Open 24 at your hours. Desk. Oh, really? You can? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, are you using it right now for anything? Yeah, uh, well, okay, I, I had a few stickers uh, from a long time ago that I hadn't had time to send out yet, so uh, anybody who's been left out, uh, sending some sticker packs uh, to you guys with the new snazzy stickers right from my desk at home. What? Boom. There you go. So right now, uh, use Belly for the special offer, a four-week trial, which includes postage and a digital scale. So don't wait. Go to Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Belly. That's Stamps.com. Enter Belly. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Great yeah. for small businesses if you got And big thing. ones. And big ones <laughs> if you want to be corporate about yeah. it. Five, four, three, two, Ladies one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Tiger Belly. Everybody wanna have a good time tonight. You're gonna listen to me right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Tiger Belly. Um, I'm um, Slep King. I'm really Billy. impressed with your lung capacity. And uh, we got Kalila and fuck George. I love him. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm so nice. To, I'm so mean <laughs> hey to him. Hey, guys. And we got Gilbert in the house. And welcome to another episode. And man, I haven't left the house all day. Mm-hmm. And all I day. feel good about it. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you something, Gilbert. I want yeah. to start off with this. Mm-hmm. What's up with you being paranoid about that guy posting that thing about you that he's going to ruin your career or whatnot? Oh, the uh, no! I, I so some guy uh, Instagram messaged me, and he he starts it off this he starts it off this way. Yeah. Uh, Dear Gilbert, I am a Hollywood A list celebrity, and I think he spelled, he yeah. put the A in A list lowercase. Yeah. Didn't even put a hyphen. Just said A lister. Yeah. Um, I have this other. He's account. on A list. One of them. He's one. He's on A list. Already, I have a a, a commentary. A comment. To Go me. ahead. What's the commentary? An A list actor. In uh, direct messaging a D-list podcaster. <laughs> wow. Okay. Who does audio? Uh, who does audio? He's our he's our third guy. Okay, go ahead. And he yeah. said, um, "I'm a white." I think he said he was a white. A-list, he's a white guy. A yeah, white guy. Email, yeah. yeah. And he doesn't like the material we talk about on the podcast, and I think we're mean to white people. Mm. Uh, he said he can't. Sh- he said he knows doors. I believe that he can shut down my career. He's trying to like blackball Gilbert, blackball so me. he never works mm. in Hollywood again. And so I was like, he is an A-lister. He doesn't have to do that. Gilbert's doing it on his own. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. we don't need your help. Don't need He's help. closing his own doors, just shutting them down. And then and he emailed Bobby <laughs> saying well, that he emailed, well, he emailed you too, right? Yeah. Well, he emailed me saying that he had pictures. Uh, that him and I have had sex before that my pussy was subpar <laughs> and that he has beyond subpar yeah beyond like let's be it's let's average. be clear it's average it's basically just a fucking <laughs> hole in the ground yeah yeah and he said that he had nudes of me and that but he's gonna keep it to himself and I'm like beg I really wanted to reply and say like please yeah. leak the nudes I want to be famous yeah and then he wrote Bobby saying, "I'm I'm an owner of a medical building in downtown Los Angeles, yeah. aka hops- hospital. Uh, yeah, hospital. I'm say all- hospital. And say then hospital. he said, because, <laughs> because medical of, building. Hey, yeah. because of your podcast, I'm only going to hire white people now because you guys are racist towards white. Okay, now you were worried about it though. <laughs> no, I was not. Well, a little bit. That's what no, Koala said. If, if it was like it was like a hey, this is Brad Pitt. I fucking hate your <laughs> podcast that yeah. you're on. I'm gonna blackball you. I'd be scared." But when you're saying a lister, yeah. yeah, and you have a thousand followers with yeah. a dog as your fucking, but, so you didn't, you weren't worried about it at all, then. No, I wasn't. Okay, good. But I was about to go to audition right when I saw. It. Yeah, not a. <laughs> yeah, no one can do anything like that, even right. if somebody that's a list, supposedly, let's say Brad Pitt did did not like you, mm-hmm. he still doesn't have the power to. And also, stop Brad you. Pitt has enemies, so those enemies are going to help mm. you. Yeah. And also, he just doesn't. There's just so many people out there. What he's gonna call every producer, every <laughs> casting director, every project, and go black. But you know, it makes him look like a fool. By the way, by doing that, I finally wrote the guy back though. Oh god! I, I, I just two lines. I said, Men- "Mental illness is not a joke. 
you should seek some professional help because Damn. it seemed like he probably he's having some like grandiose thoughts and it was worrisome so if you're listening to this like just we're not making fun of you just seek some help and can i just say like complaining about uh uh, the treatment of white people. He yeah. didn't even troll me. I was the only person here he who was even. not worthy of being trolled. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of rude. Also, He's racist to you. Yeah. Even. I didn't know we had a guest. Who's your friend on your face? <laughs> <laughs> a smile. Yeah, yeah. Do, what, do you wash your face or no? Oh, he has one pimple. He's Where? making fun yeah, of your right pimple, your pimple Yeah. Oh, oh, I do. Yeah, you all right? I put a Biore strip that's on my fine. nose today. <laughs> I thought Biora's it was looking good. Fine. Shit. It's fine. You can't notice it. So tell us about well, um, your to, weekend. I just want to say about white people, though, in general, though. Um, <laughs> That number one, you know, I don't want to, I, I don't want to be one of those guys that says like in Get Out, you know what I mean? Like going to a black person and going, I voted for Barack Obama yeah. or whatever, right? But I grew up with a lot of whites, mm -hmm. and they they raised me. <laughs> so the okay. like Craig Crawford, white. <laughs> That's pretty. Alan Meadows, <laughs> white. Mm -hmm. Eric Purvis, white. These are my friends. Okay, and they invited me to their house. I had pie. <laughs> love pie, right? White people food. Yeah, and um, they played badminton and um, badminton. And what's that little foosball? That's fun. Yeah, That's yeah. always a good one. Foosball. Yeah. Stick soccer, whatever that call they call that. And I was raised with them, and I went to rehab with a white bunch of whites. So I'm, I'm. You're raised by whites. Yeah, I was raised by some people were raised by wolves. I was raised by whites. So I understand. Okay. So whoever's like doing this, stop. He's it's ridiculous. He's not okay. He's not okay. He's not okay. Let's what do you mean the weekend? I want to know about your weekend. What'd you do this weekend? Oh! I, I didn't see you. Well, I, I, well um, I'll tell you what I did this weekend. You know, a lot of times in life, you, you, you this is people's lives. You wake up, you, you work, you do your exercises, mm -hmm. you eat your meals, you say, you bond and fellowship with your family mm -hmm. and friends and whatnot. And you go about your life, nothing really exciting happens. But every once in a while, you'll run into a a spiritual human, somebody that like you you really look up to, and you highly regard, and you don't expect to run into them, and it throws you through through a loop. Is that right mm -hmm. terminology? And um, so I was at the comedy store Saturday night, minding my own business, just doing my shows, mm -hmm. and um, I'm in the lobby, like, like the patio outside the comedy store. And I'm walking through, and I hear a couple of girls go, Bobby! Which is normal. Thank you. Which is very normal. Thank you. Mm. And I didn't turn my head. I kept walking. Mm -hmm. But then like 10 minutes later, I came back. That same group was there. But then in the group, I see a little gook face. <laughs> like familiar gook face. Like oh, a familiar gook oh, face. Oh, like an Asian fan. An Asian, fan. Asian looked like a fan. Yeah. But it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, it was the what? dad fan. Wow. wow! And my Whoa. heart, my heart stopped. <laughs> I could have died right then and there. I mean, I started shaking. Oh, I really did. Yeah. I'm like, is this a dream? Is this, is it my birthday? This is like a lottery. So he walks up to me, and I'm looking at his hands. I just want to see where his hands are. Just in case he has a weapon. I just wanted to see. His just want to just see the hands. Yeah, no? I want to see if he's no. going to go in for a pound. A handshake, but it went into a hug. Whoa! Ooh. Skip. Ooh. Skip. I hug him, right? Mm -hmm. And I smelled him mm. <laughs> because I haven't what? seen him in so long that I hugged him and I, I did a sniff. And I go, "That's it, Sam. <laughs> it's him. That's, it's sweet. That smell. It's pungent. It's great. The nectar." And then I'm like, I didn't know what to say. So, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I started stuttering. Like, what did, what you were the, starstruck? Yeah. He was in the presence of royalty, guys. What, 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 what are you doing here? That's what I said. No, oh, I have a couple of friends from San Diego. You know, they wanted to check out the club. And then the, one of the girls he was with, I knew back in the day mm -hmm. when I started comedy. She started with me. And she quit for 17 years. And then she came back. She's hanging out with that. That's fine. But then she's like, remember you came over to my house? This is like in 90, 1995. And you know, we I was sober, and you you remember we did some step work, or I don't know what it was. I go, oh, yeah, yeah. And then, um, then this other girl that they were with says to me, she goes, "You do comedy?" And I go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." And then she goes, "Is that all you do?" I go, "You do stand up, right?" She goes, "Yeah." I go, "How long have you been doing?" It? She goes, four months." Mm. I go, "Oh, cool, congratulations." And then she goes, "But do you just do stand up, or do you do other things?" 
God. And then dad defended me. He was like, he, he does a lot of things. He does movies and TV. He did like got into He's like, hashtag damn. love on yeah, back, yeah, yeah, backing me up. Holy shit. Right? And I blushed. <laughs> because as when one does. Yeah, as, one, one, does. as one does. Yeah. And then I walked away from him for a bit because I had to catch my breath. You know, I was gather your thoughts. You know, I was Is gather- that when you called me? Yes, <laughs> I was in a daze of like I don't know what to do. I was like, I was on the phone screaming. Yeah, I, ask him why he blocked me. Yeah, yeah, and my face, and what's weird, my face was sweating, but when I touched my face, there was no sweat. So it was psychological sweat, right? And so then I talked to a couple. And then here's what I did. So then I knew that I could see him walking toward, because I'm, I'm around the building now, but like on the corner so I can mm-hmm. kind of see him. He's walking toward. So I get in a conversation with Fahim Anwar. Mm. Just as, and and we, I start immediately talking about show business. <laughs> no, you got to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to just, you know, don't be like that guy. You know what I mean? I just go, I went into some random like. And Fahim is aware of your obsession with that. They're, they're, everyone's there. Yeah. Oh, everyone, because okay. Because Court McCallum pulled me aside. He goes, what are you doing? And I go, what are you talking about? He's like, that's that, right? <laughs> I, I go, yeah. Bow down. <laughs> Motherfucker, bow. Bow down, dog. The king's here. At and this that, point, he's like mythical, right? Because yeah, we talk and then, about him so much. And then what I realized, too, is, is that I truly, and I'm not even, this is not a joke. You're going you're gonna to smile. You're going to think that I'm joking. I truly love him. And I, I don't know where I would be without him. <laughs> it's like every, you know, Superman needs Lex. Everyone I mean, I needs need, some I type need of. Him. I need him. Batman Joker. Yeah, Batman mm. Joker. Is yeah. a Superman Lex thing not a good reference? Uh, yeah, it's a Batman Joker. Really, was, what I meant. Shut the fuck up. It was just a really, it was a really good. Just listen to what I'm saying. Okay. It was a really, really good um, weekend. And oh, that's all I had to say. I about have a question it. for you. Yeah. Um, since you know you wait, checking his Instagram is so habitual for you. It's the first thing you do in the morning and the last thing you do at night, right? Mine. So after you saw him, you smelled him, you hugged it out. Yeah. He defended you. Did you wake up this morning immediately checking his Instagram like you normally do? I didn't check my Instagram this morning. Oh. Wow. So you didn't. All of a sudden, your obsession with him has withered away. I think he. I think he won. Wow. And I, I think he came to the den, mm-hmm. faced, you know, his comrade. Mm-hmm. We locked eyes. Mm-hmm. We did some sort of like truce, mm-hmm. not verbally, psychologically, mm-hmm. through our eyes, little Asian eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then when I he left, I hugged him. And I think I'm done. Okay. So- I'm free. So we, you oh. came back home, and we, you know, we had to decompress, and then we had to make sense and reconcile with our feelings because this was a really big deal. It's huge. Yeah. And we came to the conclusion that there are a lot of people <coughs> who we like cannot stand on social media, but who we, who are actually decent, okay people, and can actually be friends with us IRL in real life. That is so fucking true. What you just said. That is exactly, it's, it's, you don't know anybody through social media. Yeah. And if you think you do, you don't. Because, you know, when I, you know, when we started, Dad and, Dad and I, we had some disagreements. We, we really never hung out. But there were some arguments and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then you don't see them for a while. And then you just live through their social media. Mm. And then you have these preconceived ideas about them and whatnot. And then you run into them, and it's not true. And I, I, th- I like the guy. He's so nice. He's a nice guy, and he's good at what he does. He's good at what he does. I'm gonna maintain my opinion about him since he blocked me, anyways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys got beef. Yeah, yeah. I still got beef. Uh, with he's him. good at what he does, and um, it was just a, a a nice thing, you know. My question is. Yeah. Now, this is where I feel a little bit suspicious. He's very much aware of this podcast because he hashtagged in the photo that he posted of you and him. He hashtagged Tiger Belly. <laughs> he's blocked me and he's blocked the Tiger Belly Instagram. Yeah. So oh. he's very much aware of what we've said. Although you out of all the things that we've said, you've said 90 percent of more of the negative stuff about him. I probably said 10 percent. I've never said anything negative about him. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's I've why. never said anything negative about him. We've said a lot about him, sweetheart. Yeah, but not nothing negative. 
Facts. Okay? Okay. And I want to say this. If dad's comrades or people listening that are to Tiger Belly right now who relay information to him, tell him this. He needs to start his own podcast. Mm. He needs to do an hour pod- podcast a week. It, it changed my life. It changed the whole situation. And he sh- should do one. Right? So get on it. Because I want to listen. You guys don't even know what Bobby subjects me to. What? what? On our long drives together. So all right, I'm I can't g- even get into. I, I won't get I w- into all right, it. But I w- basically, here's put it this what, way. I, we are going to get into it because that I'll fan, tell you why. That fan doesn't have his own podcast. So what Bobby makes me listen to is a friend of a friend of that fan's podcast, and it's this like sixty year old guy <laughs> who thinks he's funny, and he Bobby makes me seriously puts me through three hours of this. I'm, I, I, I'm obsessed with. <laughs> all right, so here's the deal, and, and, yeah. I, and I'm just gonna get out there because I'm just gonna get out there, and whatever the consequences are, they are what they are. Okay, because I'm not saying anything negative. Mm-hmm. I want to be positive about it. Okay? okay, so here's the deal. Dad, Dad, okay, Dad and I, when I started, we were rivals. I didn't really know that. I mean, we were st- we're two Asian guys starting in San Diego at the same time, oh, right? Okay. And there was a group of people that really supported that and that group of people hated me uh like tribes yeah there was mm. tribes going on and that group of people i'm not kidding you and it's not in my head they were literally like physically assaulting me and shit okay so his buddy a guy by the name of chris and he had a stage name zoo man okay yeah. so he was funny comic he would go up and do animal noises Oh. Like here's an elephant, you know what I mean? <laughs> that kind of yeah. comedy. Okay. Yeah, here's a hyena, ka, 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 ka. you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. an impressionist. I, first of all, mine are dead on. Yeah, <laughs> I should have done the same thing. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, you're in a zoo. You're in a zoo. Right now? Yeah, yeah, you're in the zoo. San Diego Zoo. <laughs> pew, pew, pew! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little guns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, snakes. Yeah, yeah. That's not a snake. Oh, what was that? Uh, that was a um, buffalo, water buffalo. Oh, water, water frog. Yeah, yeah. Water buffalo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't know what buff- water buffalo is like? Classic water yeah. buffalo. <laughs> yeah, 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 like that. <laughs> yeah, so I can do it too. And he was dad's main like writer and supporter. Mm. And when dad was on Last Time I'm Standing, he wrote a lot of dad's, helped write jokes and stuff. And he's probably one of the, back. I mean, back in the day, he was the strongest comic in San Diego at the time. And they called him Zoo Man. And Zoom in and d- d- didn't like me, and uh, vice versa. But then here's the thing: he's friends with Wally Wong. I've talked about Wally yeah, Wong, yeah. Yeah. the guy, right? So Wally Wong, Chris, and a couple of other guys—they have their own podcast. And I'm going to just mention it. Just give him a shout. Wally's People will listen to too. it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it's you said called, he retired. This called, is what he subjects yeah, me it's to. It's called you guys. Um, Laughing in Your Face dot Radio. <laughs> Dot radio or dot com, uh, something uh, laughing in your face. Hey, they're gonna get some traction. For yeah, this yeah, yeah, for sure. You guys, and listen. I've it's listened great. to every single one. Uh, you have to pay for some of them. I, I've listened to every free one. What? I refuse you to pay. See, here's this is what subscribe further proves the idea that like you know enemies keep closer tabs on each other. Than I'm not friends enemies do. with anybody. I'm just I, I I respect all of those guys, and I want them to flourish. You're okay. so contradictory. You just said you fucking hated them. I didn't say I hated them. I said the there day. were tribes, and I said that they didn't mm-hmm. like me, and you know what I mean. But I don't hate them. Yeah. All right. It's just, you know, I I I'm, I no longer want to keep secrets. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be. I want to, you know, let everyone know how I feel about things, and uh, that's that. I have no hard feelings toward any of those guys. Right. There are a lot of guys from there that I like, like a guy named. Kurt Swan, he's a great dude, very funny comic, clean, but you know, I, I, I've, I, I got along with him, and uh, there was this guy named Steve Kelly that I liked a lot down there, and um, a bunch of cats. And uh, anyway, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Speaking but speaking of Asian um, comics, what? Um, you're gonna feel bad about this, but they did an all Asian documentary about Asians in um, HBO on HBO, yeah, and um. Yeah, you weren't on it. I know. Who was in it? Um, uh, Daniel Day Kim. Oh, okay, good. Um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy O. Yang. O. Yang. 
Okay. And basically, those are the only ones I knew on there. I was watching. I was like, who? I don't know who a lot of these people are. I mean, I'm sure they're talented. I just was, wasn't. Was very... Randall Park in it? Mm, no. No. Was Ken Jeong? Margaret in it? wasn't. Margaret. Well, then I don't care. Oh, okay. If it was Joe Coy, uh, here's it. Be real. Yeah. What would be Joe the, Coy? The list. Steve Byrne. Um. Ken maybe. Um. Margaret for sure. Margaret for sure. Shang Wang. Yeah. Ali Wong was Ali in it? No, no. Ali wasn't. Well, then, then I don't care. Yeah, there because really it's big like actors, yeah. also. I'm just gonna say this is that I know I'll never have a special on HBO. Mm -hmm. They just, this is they don't. They're not gonna like my brand of comedy, and so I don't really give a fuck. Although it was a very good documentary, it was nice. Don't I say really that. liked. Don't no, say that. DDK was in it. Who's DDK? Daniel, Daniel Day Kim. Kim. I never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> we all know a Daniel. You Kim. only hung out with him in Hawaii yeah, for three I, days I, straight. I, I, a good dude. <laughs> really good dude but um why why would you bring that up you thought i was gonna be upset about it i thought that it was gonna probably upset you it won't upset me if if there if, was really no one yeah if uh, it was weird dude listen to me okay if i'm tired of if people don't get me mm -hmm. i don't give a fuck That's Boom. Good. Mm -hmm. all right because i know what i've done i know what i want to do mm -hmm. and i know that i'm just going to do my fucking thing. Mm. Yeah. A lot of people, this podcast, people go, hey, you guys talk about, you mean, assholes and stuff. <laughs> true. True. And which true. is true. It's very true. It's our very favorite true. topic. Our favorite topic. <laughs> we love it. Dicks but it's and like, assholes. But, but a lot of people like it. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. Okay. And um, that's it. I'm sad about it that I wasn't in that documentary. <laughs> 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 I'm totally kidding. You know what I've been noticing lately, babe, is uh, you've been really tired as of late. My body's broken. Why is your body broken? Because you look good. Ooh, you look good. You know what you look like? If I was at the, like, beach and I saw your body, I'd be like, what the fuck? I might, if I might... you saw my body at the beach, would you be impressed? I would, I would, I would nut. <laughs> <laughs> you would nut about over that beach body? Yeah, I love that Ooh. beach body, babe. Ask me what I've been doing, What have you been doing, though? Um, I've been logging on to Beachbody On Demand uh -huh. and there is just a plethora of um, workouts to choose from. And I love the fact that because I'm a recluse and I don't like going to the gym mm. and being around other people when I work out, I can log on to my computer and I can do, I can choose from thousands of workouts and I can work out at home and I can get fit and right and make him nut in the beach. <laughs> make him nut in the beach. Right. So guys, make sure you join this brand new service because it already has a million members. Uh, so you can claim your free 30 day membership. Uh, just text belly to 303030 and get 30 days of access to the entire platform. So one more time, that's text belly to 303030. 303030. Beach body. Beach USA. Body. Beach body. I also want to talk about um, Jordan Edwards. You know about Jordan Edwards? You know about Jordan Edwards? That kid in Texas? No. This 15 year old kid in Texas. Freshman in high school, straight A student. Mm -hmm. Happens to be black. Him and his brothers were in a car. They're at a party. Leaving a, a house leaving party. Leaving a house party. Cops show up as they're leaving. Mm -hmm. Car drives away. Cop pulls out a rifle, shoots it at the car, hits Jordan Edwards in the head. He dies. Mm -hmm. Then the kid, his brother, spent the night in jail mm -hmm. for some reason. And then the next couple of days, the cops like, no, but they were, they were driving toward us, you know, erratically. Yeah. And the body camera this is Roy show. Oliver. That's the cop's name. Yeah. Roy Oliver. Everyone memorize that. Roy Oliver. Roy Oliver. Um, and... But then the body cam showed otherwise that they were driving away from them. Nobody in that car had a criminal record. Yeah, no one in the car. All young kids. All young kids. And um, then he gets fired, from which is not enough, obviously. But not charged with murder. But Friday, they charged him with murder. I mean, ass they fucking should. I know. But I'm just, I just, because it's not been in the media that much. I mean, I don't understand why it hasn't been in the I know, media. Are I, we so inundated with all these types that's of That's what stories? it is. That's why I have to say it because. I've been kind of obsessed with it. I've been every day. I've been googling what's going on, you know, and um, and then like obviously his mom, Roy Oliver's mom, the cop's mom. Mm -hmm. You know, he went to Iraq. He has PTSD, and he's a father. And you know, they're trying to, you know, you you he Miss what's her Miss Oliver. I don't know your la what your name is, mm -hmm. but he killed 
a kid. Mm. Yeah. And when you kill a kid in this country, you go to prison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay? Especially a kid that didn't do anything to you. Right. All right? So that's that. There's no justification for it. I think that... If he has PTSD, I feel bad for the guy, but he should have never been a cop then in exactly. the first place. Exactly. You have to really... This is my thing with... Um, cops like i don't know how to fix the system i do have friends and family and law enforcement and you know the general consensus when when i ask them is always like you should screen them you have psychological screening right someone who served in the military yeah they're probably more you know able to you know be in that type of like um, stressful situation much better they probably fare better than someone right you know green and had never been in like combat before but also you have to take into consideration the psychological aspect of it their ptsd and also i don't know like maybe they should up the requirements and at least have like a college degree or some type of like social studies or like studies of like ethnic studies or something to make a more tolerant people altogether or you have a chief i'm a chief (laughs) Okay, I'm a chief. Okay. All right, Gilbert, you're a new cadet. Okay. All right, you're in my new what's it called precinct. Hello, chief. What's your name? Alberto. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Hello, Alberto, Officer Alberto. Yeah. I'm Chief Rongo. Chief Rongo. <laughs> chief know. Rongo. Yeah. Chief Ro- Rongo. 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 Is what's that a that? water buffalo? That's a water buffalo. <laughs> and that's what we that's what we learned here at this yeah, precinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Animals, what we learned. Yeah. yeah. And that's what uh, my last name is. <laughs> water, yeah, yeah. water buffalo. Anyway, so um, I looked at your uh, records, okay, your school records. Oh, that's interesting. And your grades. Well, that's very mm-hmm. deep. Very good. Deep. Your sniper skills off the chain. Thank you. Your um, drunk driving test skills. Mm-hmm. Oh, great, oh, great. Okay, <laughs> well, yeah. great. I know how you got access to that, but I okay. do. I do have access. Okay. And how you f- you do the alphabets. From Z to A. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did that test? Thank you. That's a good test. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> and also you look good. Whoa, you're welcome. officer. You're welcome. What you... you're welcome. Okay, thank you. But anyway, so you're going to be in my precinct and you're, you're, I'm, I'm under your command. And I uh, mm-hmm. just want to say this um, just don't, you know, shoot any black kids. Uh, agreed. Unless, right, they have like a minigun. A military grade minigun to your face, right? You cannot shoot them. Mm. All right? Okay. So that's it. If you were uh, like teaching like an and academy you just say, of you just, new you cops. Put it out there. Just really think about, right? When, especially if it's an Amer- African American, be sensitive about the situation. Yeah, but you can't f- t- ask them to show sensitivity if they're not aware about the history. So what I would do if I were chief, I would require require all of them to watch documentaries. Hello, like, chief. I am not... I'm Alberto. What is your name? Um, this is the ch- my chief assistant. Chief. R- Ringo. Ringo. You guys have a lot of rolling R's. Yeah, yeah. You guys don't look Spanish at all. Her Hi, last Alberto. Name is, her, her, her last name is pew pew. <laughs> what animal is that again? What? I don't know. A, ho- a hawk. Oh, it's a hawk. Yeah, yeah. it's a hawk. Yeah. Uh, what um, would you do? I would ask you to watch documentaries that pertain to people's like histories i am not your negro one of them dude 13 dude know about the fucking watts riots in la what what caused that yeah um watch roots just just be culturally aware <laughs> you know who kunta kante is i know who kunta kante is yeah, well then you gotta know watch it. that too yeah what's a good um documentary about like mexican immigrants and things like that that could sh- that could help them be more empathetic uh desperado, <laughs> yeah, watch desperado. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. what other movies would you have watch, watch? Uh, the good the bad and the ugly <laughs> yes. yes yes watch um oh which one's that vampire tarantino movie uh, from Dusk Till Dawn. From Dusk Till Dawn. Dawn. Yeah. Definitely, you have to watch that movie. Will we be provided with Netflix accounts for this? Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> it but, comes out of your salary. Right, so we saw that movie, I Am Not Near Negro. Mm-hmm. And it is, I'm not going to, I'm going to say this right now. The best docu- documentary about that subject I have ever seen in my fucking life. Same. I mean, he, what's his name? Baldwin. James Baldwin. James Baldwin. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's the ninth. He's Alec Baldwin's brother. <laughs> oh, I was about to ask. Is this an actual he's Baldwin? He's the ninth Baldwin. No. no. Oh, I was about to say, Jesus, how deep does that he's go? He's black. He was like a weird. prolific, like, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. 
civil rights. Like, yeah. Well, he was actually a, a, an author back He's then. He's in between Billy and Alec. Yeah. <laughs> age wise, you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, he. He's a dude that like um, he came up in the civil rights movements with like Malcolm and Dr. King and um, Mercer. What's his name? Uh, Willie uh, Mercer. No, that's not Willie Mercer. Oh my God, Who's Willie Mercer. Um, it was started with an E. Anyway, it's a third guy. Yeah. Third guy. Anyway, um, but his like he, when he talks, he's so eloquent and precise about his the language. Mm-hmm. I literally want to like take a course what did fucking um dr king say that made me fucking fucked up a word bosh he, what, you, what the fuck is a bosh what is a bosh <laughs> but he used it i don't mean to be bosh and i'm like that sounds smart as fuck. i know but uh, that's why i want to take a class i need to take a class where you're you re- redneck retard why farm did, boy why you, you don't <laughs> fucking know nothing okay george well, i'm to tell you what bosh is yeah yeah you, are you sure it was bosh or gosh no, it was, it was Bosch. Bosch, yeah, Bosch yeah. or Bosch? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Look it up. He just wanted to show off the word gauche. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> also, he or? also wanted to crack the club king. Bosch. See that? I think you should take back the whole retard farm boy thing, though. <laughs> I just said that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I just said that. I'm sorry. So Bosch. You're not a retard farm boy. But it, if you haven't seen it, you guys have to watch it. It's You're not going to watch it, Gilbert. Am I? Is that no, HBO? You, no, you don't watch anything I fucking tell you to watch, man. It's mm. not on HBO. It's on iTunes, or I don't know. What it's on it's iTunes, but it's yeah. probably it's so fucking good and poetic and just yeah. everything that makes gives you the feels and also like it gives you a lot of guilt. No, I, I, not guilt. I mean, no I guilt. even have guilt for 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 being unaware of the extent of or you know sometimes we, we think we know the history, we know when slavery ended, we know certain things, but we didn't even know who he was. We didn't know who yeah. James Baldwin was. We yeah. know MLK. We know you know Malcolm X. We know yeah. the, but there was so much more to that story. We just didn't live through it, so we just know bullet points, and it's not enough to know bullet points. And I told you after I saw it that I would never say the N word again. You never mm. say the N word anyways. I know, but if I did, I won't. <laughs> Future deal. Like if yourself. I wanted to, even in some sort of, I will never say it. Not a question. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, <laughs> I'm not gonna say n. This is the last time I say n word even. Just the phrase. Just n and word together. Oh, okay. You're never okay. Yeah. I love his ad ad word <laughs> and and word together. Yeah. I'm gonna use Afro American. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, that's not good. Is that what you say? No, that's what Michael. Just say that's, black. That's what Michael Richards said. Remember. Oh, that's right. When he apologized. I want to apologize to the Afro American community. It's like, how does that you come from, out of your mouth? How does that come out of your mouth? Yeah, what are you talking about? The Afro funk. And you also told them you're going to hang them upside down and stick pitchforks in their buttholes. He's oh, so, yeah, so remember right. he said that buttholes. What well, ass? Oh yeah, <laughs> we love buttholes. But like, <laughs> low point. And it's low so point. funny because <laughs> Michael Richards at that time was doing a lot of stand up mm-hmm. in town. Like he was at the store a lot, and we used to see him. Really nice guy. I literally, I only saw him one time when Sebastian and Judd and those guys were at that Jerry Seinfeld luncheon that I went to. Do you remember I went to that luncheon? Yeah, you said you went. Yeah, I went to that luncheon. That's when I saw him again. But um, Did you talk to him? No. I just saw him and he was like, he was talking to this black guy and he was like putting his arm around him. Oh. And I was like, I think this is weird. Yeah. Because there's cameras around. Yeah. Oh, He's God, for me. optics. PR. Yeah. Yeah, I PR. can't deal with that at all but yeah um so mother's day is coming up what's up on sunday and um and i ask you <laughs> asked you since i like to send things to moms i'm sending my mom stuff so i was going to send your mom something for mother's day and so i was like hey i'm going to send her some asian pears with those sacheted three-in-one coffee things because those are her favorite right uh, and you what did you say <coughs> send her money and I was like, what do you mean send her money? Isn't that like really inappropriate to send like your in-laws money? You know, here's the thing about presents with you, mm-hmm. okay? And I love you, by the way. I hate when he prefaces things with I, I love, love you because something bad is about to. No, nothing bad is about to happen. Yeah. Water buffalo. Water buffalo. Water buffaloes, <laughs> FYI, just what is that? What is just that? fucking <laughs> moo, by the wolf? way. They That's moo. A midget. A midget. A midget. <laughs> Why are they at the San Diego Zoo? It's a human midget. Anyway, um, when at 12 years old, I said to my dad, I go, Dad, just enough of the gifts. Just give me cash. Mm. He goes, oh, thank you. 
So for Christmas, my brother and I would just get an envelope full of cash. And then we could get our own gifts. That's the way it should always be done. Mm. I don't want to open up a gift that you give me and then go, oh, yeah, thanks for this sock. Not even two socks. Just Here's one just sock. one sock. And one sock. Thank you. I'm not going to ever wear it. <laughs> yeah, or whatever it might be. If they say it's the it's it's the heart that matters or the gesture that matters. But- Fuck you. Give me some fucking cash. What was the last gift Kalala gave you? Do you remember? No. Do you remember Kalala? Oh, she's getting mad. Look at her. She's going to get angry. Look at her eyes. I'm curious. No. Her eyes get crossed and then her lips starts quivering. Oh, no. What no, I've I've given him a ton of stuff. Um, one of the things that I just saw in the closet was something he never wears, <laughs> which is a vintage Arsenal JVC jersey. Oh, that's I know. Cool, I man. wanted it from online. the. He wanted it. He kept talking about how he wanted it. He wanted it. He but there was no way to buy it, and I found one seller, and it took Dang. like four weeks to get here, and it's and a really I cool vintage. And tried it on. One. It just looks weird. It, the the color. It, it, I I want them forever, but I'm just never gonna wear them. So it's like a collector's item. It's a collector's yeah. item, yeah. I, and also, I like specific things. Like if I go, Aardvark hot sauce. You guys sent me those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got that. For, that's great. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But here's the thing I need dr- desperately. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you guys send me, you know, fans of Tiger Belly send me all kinds of stuff. And I really appreciate it. I really do. Um, but you guys send me like candy. Because you guys want to molest me or something. <laughs> but exactly. I w- need powdered dream water. Someone sent powdered dream water. I ate them all. You did it one day. And one mm-hmm. day I ate them all. They're my favorite things in the whole world. So um, so my question is, would you give money to your in-laws straight up in an envelope? My parents, not my in-laws. Isn't that weird? I don't think it's weird. In-laws? Okay, if I send your mom 300 bucks for Mother's Day, she's she's not going to be like, mm, that's a little bit <laughs> out right, of so line. All right, so if I went up to you, um, your mom, yeah, for her birthday, mm-hmm. and I go, Meredith, here's five hundred dollars. She would probably feel like, no, Bobby, like, why are you giving this to me? It's your birthday. She would feel probably a little weird, thankful, but right, weird. So I'll spend these five hundred dollars and yeah. get you Skittles. corn nuts <laughs> and Skittles and, the, and Skittles <laughs> and put them in a fucking box and then give them to you. You're gonna appreciate that. You'd rather have the five hundred dollars. And, and you're gonna at, you're gonna ask me to spend that money yeah. to get you something that you're not gonna fucking use. And in his his argument was like, oh, it's just a Korean way of like showing love. So I called Jessica, my best friend. She doesn't who's do Korean. it right. Her family doesn't do it right, and are, they don't do it right. <laughs> they are. Ta- and they're you know, Taiwanese. She's an, Anwa- she's an Amway salesman. <laughs> That's a different kind of Koreans. It is a different Mine are Korean. working class Koreans that just they they their hand, like, Have you seen my dad's hands? Yes. It's like they strangle a fucking Japanese dude every day. <laughs> every day. Uh, I mean, his f- hands are like fucking bloody and grisly. He's a fucking working class Korean, right? He wants money. Cash. Well, he's dying. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Oh, uh, anyway, yeah. but um, my mom wants money. So for fucking Mother's Day, give her three hundred bucks. Okay, then that's what I'll do. I was gonna give and her. And then let's Asian experiment pears. to see what happens. Oh, if she goes, Bobby. Bobby, kola, kola. She can't say your name ever. Yeah, she can. She's gonna go. Kola, she kola. Say? She, she says my name perfectly. She's gonna go. Kola, kola, kola. Uh, send me three hundred dollar. You weird. She's not gonna go that. She's gonna call you and go. Thank you. <laughs> now I buy five hundred pairs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna buy five hundred sock and corn nuts and yeah, whatever. Corn nuts. <laughs> but yeah, just send her cash. I, I just okay, think that okay. gifts, cash is the best thing, mm. in the world. That's so. It's not weird. Am I not with George? Can somebody back me up in this room? I can. I'm sorry, I can't. I would. The say thought my- is nice, but I think it, cash is so much. It's more useful. I just uh, go don't send anything because it's all corporate. So why waste your time? <laughs> you emotionless, <laughs> emotionless, fucking pragmatic asshole. Yeah. Oh no! For like yeah, like uh, and, I don't know. And, Ten years ago in my family, we decided to stop uh, buying gifts for Christmas because you're it was the too type stressful. of people. Yeah, you're the type of people that go out in the sen- fucking forest, unsentimental, so grab go, branches like, and make a. We would all go together basket. to Barnes and Noble, and we'd just like each have like fifty bucks, a hundred bucks to spend, and then uh, my dad tossed on his credit card. We'd all spend buy books because we're smart and know what gauche means, and then uh, <laughs> we'd all be happy. Yeah. I don't That's like buying gifts for people if I don't know them personally. If I don't know exactly what they want. That that gift to card. me is not fun. Go for the gift. Then card. I'd be like, yeah, cash or gift card. Gift card. But if I know exactly what they want, I guess part of their reward I, is I, that I feel good about getting them what they I want. I also discovered something about myself today. Mm. That my penis <laughs> okay. is not standard Korean. Is magic. 
Oh, wait, what? That was a very different answer. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I just thought of it. Kalan and I got in a little fight. <laughs> we got a little spat. We spat, right? <laughs> Earlier today, yeah. Yeah, and it was like a, an argument. And then she was in the bathroom. She closed the door. I walked in. I gave her a I was hug. crying. I'm so sorry. She was crying. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. And then I pulled my penis out. <laughs> and he started rubbing it on my back. I started rubbing my penis on her back. <laughs> and her her tears just Dried went right up. back into her face. Yeah. And she smiled. And that was that. And then the fight was over. Yeah. My penis is pure magic. May I ask the technique you used? He just pushed his sack and dick <laughs> right into the oh, fucking so small of my back. She Gilbert. squished all of it. There yeah. wasn't like yeah, a feathering. Yeah, yeah. No. Just squish it. Yeah. He's like, baby, you make me. You know, he yeah, started. Yeah, to, he, yeah. he was like feeling, telling me that he was aroused by my tears. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you make me, and she giggled. You yeah, know what I, mean? I was like, and stop it! Yeah. He kept pushing harder yeah, into my back. Harder, Can you yeah. walk us through your mind? Like, okay, so the pe- like, you're crying, right? I'm so sad. Penis touches your back. He gives my feelings no validation. Penis on your back right now. Oh my god, this is weird. Baby, yeah, your tears make I me happy. I forgive ha- you. <laughs> what? That's That's just happened. like that? That's exactly what happened. Yeah, it was weird. It was some like really quick switch. It's like, I really want this penis out of my back. I guess I should just dry my tears. <laughs> yeah. So Magic you penis. You just learn things every day, y'all. You know? And um, I still don't know. I don't, people, people don't want to hear about it. But if the show that I'm on gets picked up, it's it's causing me a lot of anxiety. When do we find out? You, I was supposed to find out weeks a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> so it's anxiety this whole week. It's just, it's literally like you just can't. You don't know where what your life is going to be like, so you, you you everything's on hold, mm. right? Because if it gets picked up, then it the machine goes, and then there's, you know, you start it gets busy, yeah, right. We don't know. Like next week is the upfronts, and I got an email from CAA, which is the agency. My agency. You're invited to the New York upfronts CAA party. That's and the club, right? That's that the club. club May I ask what that's the upfronts is? It's basically they, they the networks reveal their shows and and existing mm. shows and their new shows, and they put them on stage mm-hmm. in front of like ad executives and, oh, okay. and the media and stuff, and they clap. It's for me, what it is for me is that because I play, like when I played Baltimore, I played 15 people in an empty room, <laughs> 15? right? 15? Yeah. Shit. I played at Baltimore in a 300, 400 seat venue. 15 <laughs> people showed up. What? This is like three weeks, two weeks ago. We didn't talk about it. it we didn't talk sad. about it. Oh it my God. Sad. And I walked up and I had to do 45 minutes. And then like, they were rude to me, the club. And, oh, I, and yeah. then I had to take a fucking hotel shuttle back to the hotel. Yeah. And it was just a really terrible, and then you you think, should I quit? Mm. This is terrible. Then Saturday night, a bunch of Tiger Belly people showed up. That was nice, but that Thursday night show was just so depressing. God. So you just you just sometimes want some sort of <clears throat> affirmation that maybe things will get better, right? So that's all. So we go to the upfronts. Is it some like glitzy glamour party after party thing? Red yes. carpet and all that. Yeah, you go. All the shows are there. So for instance, like like ABC with Modern Family, Scandal, Scandal. They'll all be there in a tunnel to go up on stage, and it's just you're around. I remember like when I was on Mad TV, and we would go to the upfronts, and we would be there with like tw- the cast of Twenty Four, Arrested Development, um, American Idol, because they're all Fox shows. Oh, okay. Right, and you're like. You know, hanging out with everyone, you're laughing, colleagues, and you're yeah. not obviously. I'm nowhere near there mm-hmm. where they're at, but you get a taste of it, right? You go, oh, maybe, you know, and then you don't work for ten years after that, you know, or whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever <laughs> it was, goes by. whatever it was, you know. Yeah. But you, like, you told me a story about how you oh took a God. girl to the upfronts one year. Yeah, have I told you the story? No. I think this we is, okay, briefly I'm, talked brief, about uh, it in an earlier podcast. I'm going to tell you something. A long time ago, yeah. yeah. And I'm not going to mention her name, but this, I I will always remember this. So I got sober, and then I met this girl mm-hmm. in AA. She was a blonde girl. She's got the Joker's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it, her lips, the edges of her lips reached her ears. <laughs> Jesus. Right, when she smiled. 
You can swallow your balls and dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I thought she was, I thought she was flirting with me whenever I had a meeting. Mm -hmm. And I knew she also wanted to be into comedy. So I go, hey, I'm going to the out front. You want to go? Ooh. Right? Thinking that, you know. Out fronts are in New York. It's in New York. Yeah. And they fly, they fly you first class. It's a it's a nice hotel, the whole thing. So she goes, yeah, I'll go. Right? And she gave you the vibe that like, I'm gonna fuck you're going to you fuck. Later. Yeah. yeah. Right? And then we fly over there. We're in the hotel room. I go in for a kiss or whatever. Ooh. And the vibe is, what are you doing? I got that. No, we're just friends. Like, I'm not attracted to you. Oh, man. Right? And now I'm in a situation. <laughs> now I have to spend three days <laughs> with a. First of all, anyone in that situation. <laughs> You should get the kiss before you invite them. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't think that if you invite a girl to Hawaii, that you haven't hooked up with or kissed, it's about to happen. Or and then and if you think you're gonna, you're gonna fly her to Hawaii, it's gonna happen in Hawaii. No, <laughs> she's gonna get tan. She's gonna spend money, your money, and you're not gonna get laid. Mm -hmm. Right. So that should be up front, and that's what I did. This is the learning I yeah. learned <laughs> it from her. Okay. So then, oh fuck, two days, huh? Sleeping on, I'll sleep on the couch, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So then we go to this dinner party, all right? You're not going to fucking believe this shit. And so every table has, like, there's the Mad TV table. There's the American Idol table, whatnot. And then in the center of this ballroom is the table, which is the executives and the oh. president of the network, mm. okay? Which I have never even... I don't even, even if the bathroom was toward that direction, I would hold it so I don't even have to walk by them. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, what am I going to say? If I open my mouth, I'm going to burn bridges. Yeah. And I'm going to go, hey, fatty. And then like, it's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> Matt TV canceled. Yeah, yeah Matt TV. I'll say something. <laughs> so I just, I take myself out of the situation. Sure, sure. So I'm sitting there talking with some friends or whatever and whatnot. And then somebody, Ike or somebody says, where's your girl? And then somebody goes, oh, she's over there. And I look over, and this girl has her business card out. Oh, my God. Giving it to the president of Fox Television. I do comedy. Oh, my God. And this is my, e this is my um, website and all that stuff. Oh, you, okay, so let me just How say red did you turn? Red? <laughs> I mean, she could have died. You want to hit her? No. There was more I wanted to do. <laughs> But I'm going to end it there. Gotcha. Okay. I get up. I go toward the main table where she's at. I grab her wrist as hard as I can. She might have marks still there on her wrist. I drag her. I go, what the fuck? Are you? I go, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck? You know what I mean? And I pull her toward the table. She goes, what the f you're hurting me. You know, I drag her back to the thing. We don't talk for the rest of the trip, pretty much. Are you in the same hotel room? Yeah. Ah, ah, sir. Yikes. It was a terrible, terrible experience. Oh, oh my God. God. But, and then we Googled her the, the, the other day. We She's did. famous now. Yeah. So and now, if we go to the upfronts, I want to specifically go over to the executive table and be like, hi, I have a podcast called Tiger Belly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kalila. Oh, my God. Oh, do I need to get your business cards for yeah, this? Yeah, please, God. please. I, I know I came I here think, with him, I but... Think, I think if you did it, yeah. it would be funny. <laughs> Her. Oh, God, yeah. Because you know because I mean? You'll play it up. You'll play it I'll up. Because I'll tell you yeah. something right now. If that girl had a fucked me, that's that's a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but it's the idea that I got nothing out of it, and she embarrassed. And then you. she embarrassed me. The embarrassment I can swallow if she's sucking my dick. <laughs> All right, but swallow, because she did swallow for a swallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swallow, swallow for, for a swallow. swallow. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the. Time. And I write that down. Swallow for a swallow. That should be a, a, a title. Yeah, title. Yeah, title. title. And a T-shirt. Right? Yeah. So she didn't hook up with me, and yet she just wanted. Me, and then I never really saw her again. And I ran into her. Five years after that, at a, I saw her at a meeting. Mm -hmm. And she had gotten married. She's oh. sitting next to her juju um, husband. And they're sitting there, and I go, and, I, and she goes, hi. And I just looked, and I went, Ugh. You and knew I, it I went to the other side. Oh, yeah. No, no. I'll never look at that creature again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, she, she owes, you know what I mean? She owed me something. 
She didn't blow, owe you anything. I know. She didn't owe you that. Th- but she did owe you was the decency to not embarrass you like that. I know. That's what she owed you. She yeah. owed you a certain type of, you know, like finesse about and then, so, being someone's date. So that was the that last situation. time I went to the upfront. So it was a terrible time. And then when I was on Animal Practice, which is an NBC show I was on, mm-hmm. they didn't invite me to the upfronts because of the fact that there's too many cast members. But you're a serious so rat. Who did they I invite? was. They only invited uh, Justin Kirk and the monkey. What, the monkey? <laughs> the, the monkey, monkey went. The monkey before the fucking monkey went. An animal? <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to say something right now. I was shooting a scene with the monkey, right? Okay. And this is between they're setting up cameras and his trainer go, this monkey, this monkey, how much does a monkey get paid? 16 grand a week. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Motherfucking monkey, and Americans can't get health insurance, but a fucking monkey, a monkey is getting paid getting sixteen thousand dollars a week. A week. But you think he's getting any of it? He's getting zero. He's getting zero. It's called slavery. Poor monkey. Yeah. yeah poor fucking monkey. Peta, get him. Get him. Yeah, Peta. Get him. Get the monkey. But um, <laughs> so that's why I want. I want. I do look on Deadline, and it looks good. <sighs> oh, there's Let's things popping crossed, up. Fingers crossed, everybody. Fingers yeah. crossed. Let's not jinx it. Though. I'm not jinxing let's it. Let's just not. Let's assume it's not gonna get picked up. How about that? Okay, I'm going to say this: if it doesn't get picked up, I'm gonna go into a two week de- deep depression mm-hmm. because I really believe. Because I think Love knows I got the show. They do know that I got the show, so that I feel like they're weeding me out of the show. <laughs> so if I don't get it, and then I'm weeded out of Love, I got nothing. Except for this beautiful podcast, and this mm-hmm. this this is which something should be I'm, enough. It is enough. Thank you for listening. I'm gonna live through it. I'm gonna live through it because of you guys. Okay, thank you so much. Um, how much time was that? I have um, I I have something. Enough, right, now. that wasn't enough time. No, it's not enough time. I want to say something. Okay, I can't even re- eat regular. Like if I can't go to no restaurants no more. You know why? <laughs> why? Because <laughs> my my palate and my appetite all hungers for blue. Bloop? Blue bloops. <laughs> Blue bloops? Oh, are you trying to say <laughs> Blue Apron? Blue. I was not done talking. Oh. All right. My palate and my hunger <laughs> desires Blue. <laughs> Blue Apron. Boom. I love Blue Apron, man. Wow. Kalila, it's easy to make, right, Kalila? No, it it is easy to make. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's very easy to make. It's um, put it this way. That's the that's the what makes it enjoyable is that it's not very easy to make, but it's worth your time because mm. they're very well thought out recipes with a lot. It of really is good. I mean, I eat it and I love it. And um, and there's no waste. I love that no the, the all of the ingredients are very um, very specifically measured, so you don't have you know a lot of waste. And what's really cool is that they have an app, and you can choose your meals. You can choose out of eight different oh. meals each week which one which three you want for that week. And you can just go ahead and scroll all forward through the week. I can even yeah. choose for the week of June 7th. That far in advance? Yeah, I'm getting seared steaks and salsa verde. Ooh, what was the last thing you guys ate? <sighs> lemongrass burger. Damn. Yeah, lemongrass mm-hmm. burger. That was good. Yeah. So, guys, oh. make sure you check. Oh, what? I sometimes want to mail things. I go to stamp.com. <laughs> To, to mail your blue apron. And my blue apron. <laughs> so check out this video. Get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash belly. Beach body. You know, you will love how good it feels. It tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with blue apron. So don't wait. Blue apron's the best. And that's blueapron.com slash belly. Blue apron, a better way to cook. Mm. Mm. you. And now back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Um, I read an article on Vice about nuclear bomb preparedness. And since um, you play Fallout, and since there's this threat of North Korea dropping... Oh, gosh. You know, some type of, like, bomb. Bomb. Let's say in the middle of L.A., right? Uh, yeah. Are you prepared? Because yes, because I play Fallout, and I'm prepared. <laughs> he knows how Are to you craft. Certain? Yeah. Okay, so I'll test you then. Or an actual based, <laughs> based on my fallout experience, you test me. Okay, I'll test you. <laughs> Using okay. your game okay. knowledge. Okay, so nuclear blast preparation, okay? Uh-huh. So let's suppose North Korea drops a 10 kiloton uh-huh. nuclear bomb uh-huh. in the middle of Los Angeles. Uh-huh. Okay, and now, okay, the bomb, it's within its one mile radius, everything is just level. I understand. So within the three mile radius, however, whatever, the fallout zone. Yeah. 
Within well, the t- zero would, to fifteen minutes, what are we supposed to do? We find out, oh shit, something. We're still alive. We gotta go get. We some, see the rubble. We gotta go to the hospital, get some rat away and some stim packs. <laughs> okay, stim packs. And what we do is we have to also immediately go to some sort of like uh, military facility and get some power armor mm. because that protects you from radiation. Got it. Right. And then we'll probably just go to a, like a rocket um, gas station, right? And we'll build a little community, mm. a settlement. And- no, uh, this is based on Fallout. Uh, then you're not prepared then. So the but video you, game you, that you've been playing for three years has not taught you anything. <laughs> yes, this is works in the video game. So Fallout has not taught, <laughs> yes, it does. Has not taught yes, you it does. about the real because Fallout. Because what are you going to do when the ghouls come? <laughs> or when the super mutants come? What's your answer? Super, super mutants come. What's your what answer, the fuck is your answer, lady? What's your answer for ghouls? Yeah. Well, with your plan, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be long dead from radiation You'll exposure. You'll be a ghoul. <laughs> okay? Cool. You'll be a ghoul. All right, and then you know, and you're gonna. There's two different types of ghouls. There's ghouls that attack you, and there's ghouls that can talk and stuff. So you can still talk and stuff, and you'll still we'll get you in a. You're not gonna be able to go to um. You're not gonna be able to go to like uh, Megaton or any of the cities because some some of the cities don't let ghouls hang out yeah. there. But yeah, I won't kill you. But I, we won't. We're done fucking. Oh, if you're a ghoul, you know. The correct answer was just find shelter within the first zero to fifteen minutes. N- not close to a window. Fifteen window. minutes. I don't fucking live in it. I'd rather. You know what I'm gonna do if I sit here a fucking bomb? Where is it hitting? Uh, it, it on the p- corner of Pico and Vermont. That's where I'm going. <laughs> you go to the epicenter. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the epicenter, right? And then when it hits, I'm just gonna do a funny. F- thing like this with my body oh so you freeze I'm gonna freeze like this and it creates a funny nuclear shadow oh, Jesus Christ <laughs> the greatest comedian to ever live yeah. Bobby Lee so like 600 years from now they see my nuclear shadow and go Bobby Lee was right there the finest comedian the world <laughs> yeah. has ever seen because he's doing jazz hands <laughs> yeah yeah Jesus Christ no I, I would probably die I don't, I don't want to live in that world and then what happens so the bomb hits right I do what you say shelter Go to a shelter. Go underground, and then I leave. And then what happens? No, because the half life it become you become less and less radioactive over time. So I think within seven hours, it's only like ten percent radiation left. Uh. Okay, what kicks up, what goes into the plume, eventually has to come down. So mm. that's what that's why within the first zero to fifteen minutes, you have to find shelter. So those ah. so those little particles of radiation mm. do not land on you. So you don't want to be near windows. You want to be in like a like a New York subway or like the the garage downstairs or somewhere right. just. To avoid then, any type so, of exposure. So this is what happens. And after 24 hours, then aid can come to you. Because and the aid can come to you. And then I go, okay, um, I'm alive. Okay, so I, I, Kalala said to go underground. I went underground. And Kalala's here. Kalala's with me. Where's Steve? <laughs> oh, he doesn't have it underground. He was asleep. He died. That's it. Then I go, all right, well, I'm going to go die now. Step outside. Mm-hmm. I don't want to live. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't want to live without my brother. Mm. Okay, I don't want to live without Crystalia. I'm st- I'm you haven't said Kalala. He's definitely dead. You haven't said Kalala. You're, you're with me already. You're with me already. We went, we went underground know, together. But what the fuck? I'm still. I need you. All oh, right. That's good. That's good. All right. That's good. Fuck Chris. But it, okay, <laughs> if Chris Crystalia. died, fine. But if my brother died, okay, if your sister died too. Let's say my brother and sister died in a nuclear attack. We would do a double suicide, you and I. What well, then do you go? Yeah. You wouldn't be able to live we on. We would Romeo and Juliet it. Mm, Even if we both survived and my brother lived and your sister died, mm-hmm. I would look at you and I'd go, I would go, I completely understand if you want to kill yourself. Yeah. But I, I want to do it. Let's do it in the easiest way possible so you don't, you don't feel any pain. Which is take a boulder to my head and just smash it? No, no, no. What is- I'll strangle you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Without, uh, without no, 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 no. Eyes, yeah, yeah, just no. looking. <laughs> look in your eyes. Look in my eyes. <laughs> put your penis on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't cry. Don't cry. Just put his thumb <laughs> in my eyeball. Don't cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I would do, Duke? <laughs> just, her last thought is a water hey, buffalo. Water buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> just trees and animals and stuff like that. Oh my god. Um, let's not. Let's hope for that doesn't happen. Yeah. Let's mm. fucking hope. Yeah. I just like it's. If you go to the California Preparedness website, it's actually there. Oh, they put it all there. Yeah, oh. they they. I, I guess it's always been there. Well, here's what you don't do, though, okay? Because I've, I've watched documentaries on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm-hmm. If the people that died... Okay, well, obviously, people on Ground Zero died immediately, but um, they evaporated. But <clears throat> uh, what people also did was the ones that survived, they went into these water 
the water container storage units. Like vats. They, they had these like bamboo gigantic mm. and people went in there. But then some of them died because it rained. Yeah. And they call it black rain. Mm. Yeah. When it, you know, back then it was yeah. called black rain and they drank, they were so thirsty, they drank the water. Ugh. And that water liquefied their insides. Oh, no. fuck. So if you're ever in a nuclear attack and it's raining, don't, you know, wait until you can go to the store and get some Fiji water. Don't go. <laughs> oh, look Don't at open that. your mouth and, and get the black rain. Oh, There's this man. other thing. Well, let's, you want to know more catastrophic things that are happening or are you over it? Well, let's bring it on. What is it? So I was reading this other article that because of like climate change and the permafrost melting, that viruses that were once um, asleep and buried in the permafrost yeah. are now alive and kicking. So, for example, there's this very isolated place in Syria where the permafrost has melted, where there was a, an outbreak of anthrax. And I guess anthrax had been buried in the dead deer in the permafrost for a long time, but because it melted, so there was this strange little outbreak in a Siberian town. And so now they're finding it more with like, Things like anthrax and other strange, like for instance, the 1918 um, Spanish um, pandemic flu could resurface. No. What? Nah. I'm not because of melting that. permafrost. Because my left foot has all of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of me. It's got black plague, all kinds of stuff. Black yeah. rain. Black but imagine rain. if like things that actually wiped people out back in the day. Come back. Oh my would, God. We'd figure it out, babe. I'm not scared. I mean, obviously, we'd have things like to rehydrate people. There's certain things that can't kill us anymore, but that would still, woo, that would still be very, very what creepy. Is, what, what animal is that? What? That's what? just me. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's just Bobby. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, natural yeah. mating call. Um, is that it, or did you guys want to just uh, say your quick, uh, quick picks for the UFC 211 this weekend? <laughs> Stipe Miocic versus oh, we have Oh, so who do we want next? Who's coming? Because now we got Russell Peters wants to do it. Russell Peters? Yeah. Whoa. He asked me this weekend. I want to know what everyone thinks because we've had a lot of guests back to back to back. So I think that we should at least, we should keep it down to two guests a month so that we go every other, you know. I know, but if people like Theo Vaughn wants to do it, people want to do it now and they're asking... So what do we do? We gotta. Should we do two a week? Um, I don't think that we have the manpower for that. Right. So um, I don't know what to do because it's like George will schedule them. Uh, George we does all the scheduling, scheduling and stuff. Well, you need Russell Peters' um information, George. Sure. We also got to get. Okay, who do we have in the books? We got <laughs> Steve-O <laughs> coming. Shouldn't it be a surprise? No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, we're, we're, not okay. we're not surprised. Okay, Steve-O is Steve O's coming next, week, next yes. week. Then we have um, Andrew Santino. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we got the fat black dude. What's his name? Fat Eric black Griffin? is back? Eric Griffin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's coming back? Right. It's part of that Showtime bullshit, right? It's not bullshit. I mean, that so beautiful thing. <laughs> beautiful thing. No, uh, Can we just get to unhelpful advice, please? Yeah, yeah, I don't right. like name dropping. Right, right, right. <laughs> name drop. Hey Brad guys, Pitt. So Brad fucking, Pitt, uh, we're so big now. We're not big. Thank you for your support. Yeah. <laughs> unhelpful advice with Bobby and Koala. Hi, Tiger Belly. I am 29 year old female, and I'm a huge fan of Tiger Belly. I was in a long distance relationship for three and a half years. I was dumped by my ex boyfriend in January. I found out a few weeks later he was dating someone else and it broke my heart. He sent me a friend request on Instagram two weeks ago and I sent him a DM that said, friend request, huh? Miss me yet, huh? To be a smart ass. Yesterday he responded and said, yes. I am dating a few guys right now but this message is really messing with my head. Any tips on dealing with an ex who wants uh, back in? Okay. Love you guys, pizza butt. The trust factor is, already gone. is gone. It was broken. All right, you end it. Mm -hmm. There's fucking millions of dudes out there. Mm -hmm. There are dudes more magical than that dude. Mm -hmm. Way more magical. Way more magical. He'll put their dick and balls in the small of your back. Yeah, <laughs> and wipe your tears away. Mm -hmm. So, I just these things drive me crazy, and I understand it because the people use relationship as a drug almost. Mm. The excitement, the drama, all that mm -hmm. stuff. And it's like, you got to find something outside yourself that's greater, mm -hmm. you know, like service mm. or going out, helping other people or doing something, you know, 
because when you make it about relationships and that's how you get your excitements and all that stuff, you, you get into these small little things, you know? The relationship shouldn't be central to who you are. You no, shouldn't, it's just, just it part of who you are. It shouldn't be your identity. But it seems like she was smart enough to move on in the beginning and say, hey, you know what? This dude, I'm out. So I think that you should stay strong in that decision and not give in to whatever fucking wallowing he's doing right now. And we should go a more unhelpful if we're going to do unhelpful. Yeah. <laughs> reply. Take, okay, we'll take, reply. What should she reply? Take him back in. Go, hey, uh, you can see other girl. You can see other girls. I want to still see you too. Yeah, say that. Okay, look, I'm willing to oh, see God. you and <laughs> maybe have some like closure sex, yeah. but also I'm fucking nine other dudes if that's okay with you. And can I pay your rent for you? And then screenshot it, send it to us, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jeez. Also, can you pay my rent? Pay my rent and my bills. Yeah. Yeah, ooh, do that and then see what he says. And just, you know, down the road, you can always tell him that, you know, Bobby and Kalila directed you to do so. Mm. Okay, next question. Pizza Butt was at the live show, right? Yeah, that's Pete. Okay. Uh, my name is Melissa, and I'm a relatively new listener of Tiger Belly, but I've listened to just about every episode now. I thought that growing older would mean that I would become more mature and less sensitive, but I'm 20 years old now, and I hate the person I've become. I have always have to be right about shit, and I never apologize. I feel guilty all the time, but I can't bring myself to let my proud uh, my pride down to say I'm sorry. I get easily irritated and angry. I feel like such an asshole every day, and I always need to feel like I'm better than everyone. I have burned a lot of bridges because of this, and oh I just God. don't want to know. Did you write this, Bobby? This is me. <laughs> I don't know how to be better or how to put my ego aside enough to be happier and less of a bitch. Do you guys ever struggle with this? Thanks so much, Melissa. I think what's interesting is that she has insight into this big ego that's getting in the way of her relationships. Like she knows that her behavior is fucking it up for her, but somehow something is stopping her. Yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah. Also, uh, one of the steps in AA, okay, and I'm a big supporter of AA because I'm in AA, 12 step groups, is when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. That's one of the steps. Mm. It's basically, it's like, we, you can make mistakes, but if you can acknowledge it right away and go, you know, I'm sorry, that was wrong of me. It, that you're cleaning your side of the street because if you don't clean your side of the street, your side of the street becomes cluttered. And then it, there's so much junk on that side, you're just, it just ravages your life. How do you deal, okay, for someone who... How do you deal with someone who's a repeat offender then? Let's say I was a very righteous bitch and I never apologized to you. And, you know, I, but all of a sudden I found it in me. I listened to this podcast. And I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to apologize to Bobby. I apologize to you. And you say, yeah, Kalila, you're forgiven. And then I repeat the same stupid, egotistical, selfish behavior over because, and over again. But I always apologize. Because what will end up happening is you'll be able to um, pinpoint it before it happens. When you okay, when you're aware, like if I say something, let's say I like I get in a fight with guilt. Fuck you, you fucking, you know. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. man. That was my bad. I shouldn't yell at you for that. I apologize. The next time I'm in it, right? I'll, I'll be like, you know, you catch yourself. Mm. You know, that's what life is about. You correct your, you have character defects. You're aware of them, and then hopefully you'll be able to spot them, and then. It doesn't happen as much, and no one's perfect. But she spots them. This girl knows. I know, and she if she apologizes after she goes on to her one of her righteous things, right? Then, and also you can see in your life the consequences of how you are. But you're right though, because she is only 20 years old. I was a righteous dumb bitch at 20 years old, and I it took me almost till I was 28 to go back. And apologize to everybody that I hurt in my early twenties because I really was not yeah. always a great person. Yeah, it's it's making amends. It's yeah. life. So something's gonna happen in your life where the consequences of your actions are gonna be so huge that it's gonna teach you a lesson to never do it again. But sometimes that it doesn't come when you're twenty. Sometimes it comes when you're twenty five, and someone's gonna hurt you the way you've hurt other people, and it's gonna affect you greatly. And you're gonna be like, oh shit, mm. I really should fucking check myself. That's all I got. Early 20s, Kalila. Well, I think a, a useful frame of mind is just to look at, like, the outcome you want out of any interaction. If And if the outcome is that you want to, like, feed your ego, that's usually not the out. That's how we act, but that's not the outcome we want out of mm -hmm. something. 
So look at like if you want to be friends with this person, act in accordance with uh, what that outcome is. Yeah. Rather than yeah, ego driven or. I got fucking bitch slapped by life multiple times when I was 24. And that's when I realized what a righteous little cunt I was. And I was like, oh God, I cannot live like this. I've been selfish and very reckless mm. and full of ego. So Hashtag Vegas. <laughs> uh, any shows? Uh, I'm playing what? Oh, Something yeah. Something coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a show. Um, Bobby will be in Cleveland June 1st to the Ooh. 3rd. Hilarity is one of my favorite rooms. Right. Hilarities. One of his favorite rooms. <laughs> um, the week after that, he'll be at Parlor Live in Bellevue, which is one of my favorite Seattle. rooms. Um, June 22nd to the 24th, Comedy Zone, Charlotte. It's okay. Um, <laughs> <ju> <laughs> but come, to, come to the show. Come to the show. To the show. For yeah. sure, come to the show. July, you know, it's good. It's good. It's July good. 20th to 22nd, Tempe, Arizona. I get to see my parents. Yes. Mm. July 28th, 29th, Wise Guy, Salt Lake City. Never been there. Um, in August, you'll be in New Mexico for one day, one night at the Star Casino Pueblo. Beautiful room. Never been there. <laughs> September Star 1st Pueblo. to the 3rd, off the hook, Naples, Florida. Uh, Have you ever shit. been? Naples, no, Florida. No, baby, these things are tentative. Oh, okay. That's okay, right. Yeah, All tentative. tentative. So yeah. sorry to... <laughs> But no, the June dates are, f are, f are not tentative. For sure. So the June they? dates are not tentative. <laughs> <laughs> the, June the June dates are not tentative. tentative. Okay. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you for listening. Uh, I mean, we didn't do the UFC stuff, oh, Dobby. Oh, fuck it, do it. I didn't know Bobby was leaving if we are going to do it now. I'm going to leave. Yeah, yeah, you, no, you no, do no, it. No. You do it you, there, It's a really good fight card. Just your top two picks yeah, for the two on. fights. Johanna and Myopic. Ooh, the biopic. The, myo, the biopic. <laughs> the biopic. biopic. Me check. Okay. Uh, George Kimball, do you have any? Oh, should we? Well, before that, uh, oh, we'll off. put the UFC at the end just so people can after we get our house cleaning out. Yeah. Uh, anything? Not bad. Can August. I pee? Yeah. yeah, go pee. Me and George will talk. Okay. I, I don't know why I had to say that into the mic. <laughs> so George told me the other day, or not the other day, today that he went to the coolest, the coolest new spot in LA where there was a trans. Gen no, a cross-dressing. Oh, dude, my Friday night was amazing. I went to see, uh, I was just, uh, went to a uh, art gallery opening with Gustavo. Ooh, very go East gosh LA. of you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the arts district. And then uh, my cousin and I were like, hey, we're hungry. So we went down uh, Whittier just to find the first place we found, like mm -hmm. we'd find, like in uh, East LA. This place was amazing. First, there was a $10 cover. So you're kind of wondering what hap what uh, what you're getting. Like, why are we paying money? Yeah. Packed to the gills. Drag queen uh, girl singing Mexican hits from, I don't know, every Mexican hit ever. The place was going wild. Uh, we got a George seat up was front. Going wild as well. <laughs> we got a seat up front. Of course, my cousin gets pulled up on stage. Lots of great jokes uh, that I couldn't understand all of, but I kind of like laughed at ideas. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, so you're basically laughing at premises, not punchlines. I thought, yeah, I thought I was good at Very Spanish, but like, concept. I'm not good at PA Spanish. I think, like, when it's mm. coming through a PA system, so like, there was a concept of I was getting the concepts of the jokes, and then any joke that I kind of got, I laughed way too loud. So like, one concept I got was that, of course, it was a drag queen, so he was complaining about his uh, monthly times, mm. you know. Uh, and I laughed at that premise. I don't know what the punchline was. Uh, and then my cousin <laughs> okay. was on stage, and so. Uh, she suckered him to asking uh, for like what her numbers were, what her number yeah, was. Yeah. So, of course, the first joke is she started going like, uh, 90 centimetros de busto, hey, uh, 44 centi I don't know what centimetros you're supposed to be, but like, you know, like giving her uh, sizes. Yeah. And then, of course, got down to her dick size and it was like, un montón, I don't know. Uh, un, montón. un montón de centimetros and like held her hands out there and I just busted up. So basically, it's George this, loves what drag you're queens. describing right now. <laughs> That's what I got. Is every single bar in the Philippines all drag? We it's all are drag, the right? best drag queen entertainers, like by far. Do out you, of I think. Do you think you beat out Thailand? Yes, absolutely. Oh. I think that Filipino comedy and the drag queen culture mm -hmm. is unmatched. It's that's what I grew up basically watching, yeah. watching and being a part of so for my friends when i take them back home and we they participate or they're in the mm -hmm. audience they're always such an awe like you are yeah but it's such a part well, of well like, i didn't our, know it's a big part of mexican culture i didn't like hadn't noticed it before it might just be here but well we're the mexico the crowd Asia, was going so it makes sense. the crowd was going wild yeah that's oh, what yeah, you these women open. were singing along to every 
every song. Yeah. Yeah. Think about opening a karaoke bar slash drag comedy show mm-hmm. in LA with Filipino food. And I only serve um, Tanduay, Red Horse, Sun Mig, Gold Time Eagle. Out. Wait, what is happening? Gold. Those are the those are the um, alcohol of the Philippines. Tanduay rum. Oh. Tanduay. Horse meat. Okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. Red Alistair. Horse beer, San Miguel Light. San Miguel. San Big. I know San Miguel. Then there's Gold Eagle, which is cheaper. So that's like a nat- naturalized. And there's Emperador, which is a cheaper rum. Oh, compared okay. to Tanduay. I can tell from your eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, ooh, that is like straight gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. My liver I, is still recovering. Can I run my car on this? <laughs> uh, any any announcements, George? Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, anything, Kalila? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, I'll just talk about beers. Uh, well. I miss the Philippines. I want to go so badly, but I'm... I've. You might pass out on the plane, so... No, no, no. I think that I just need to get over... Um, I need to, when, the moment I feel like I trust my body to fully travel, because it's a 22 hour um, yeah. flight. And, you know, I don't want to just go there and chill. Like, I, I want to explore, go into the province and do all that. So, as long as I feel confident that nothing's going to happen health wise, then um, that's when I'll be ready. I really want to take you guys there. It's like my dream for you guys to experience I've been waiting w- to get out of the country. what yeah. I grew up mm. into. Or with. I want to go to your hometown. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to see. Well, Cebu is a big. It's a metropolis. It's a. It's a big city. It's. But I would take you to like the provincial area. That's what I want to see. Is that shit? Yeah. Yeah. That's the most fun. The city is just. A, just a city. I just want to see an Aswang. <laughs> we'll look for one. We'll look for one Ning. Oh, we're looking for an Aswang. <laughs> I don't see it in the tour guide book. We have. Um. We have another one called an Agda. Okay. And Agda is just like a, a like a tree monster. There are plenty of those. I'll find I you think, one. Is that just based on people at night seeing trees just moving back and forth? And I don't know what it's based. Pretty on. Pretty sure that's just a tree. But I'm pretty terrified wind. of the Agda. Are you drunk right now? No, you went me. to the bathroom and now you're just laughing constantly. <laughs> the release of my urine into the my toilet urine. has made me a little delirious. Uh, um, yeah, go Kyla, ahead. you uh, MMA minutes. Oh. We're about to talk MMA. So if you're not a fan of that. Goodbye, guys. Uh, UFC 211 in Dallas, Texas. It's probably one of our first, you know, like actual big blockbuster cards in a while. I Everything's know. kind of been like, eh. So we have the heavyweight fight. We'll start there for the championship. Uh, mm-hmm. Stipe biopic uh, <laughs> versus Junior Dos Santos. Um, look, I used to love Junior Dos Santos. I, I loved love it when he when he fought Cain Velasquez and he wasn't the favorite. And he Ooh, when he knocked out Verdum early Ooh. on in his career, JDS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JDS has been around a long time. Been long, yeah. Verdum has been around since Pride, forever, or probably even before. But I, I've, um, my I love JDS. I just don't think he's at the very peak of his career anymore. Mm-hmm. Or based on the last few fights I've seen him in, um, yeah, and I mean, he... so I think that Stipe is tried and true and he's on a roll and i think he's gonna take it nice yeah i think he what he got a decision um ben rothwell this is jds and then yeah. he lost to alistair overing yeah and then before that he beats the he so he's beat stipe before but that was at a decision and that was pretty close that for was me. before stipe was stipe though sure uh and then we have uh the co-main event uh the women's straw weight with joanna Jonjecic and, and jessica Je- andraj Draj, the brazil versus poland um, I think this is uh, going to be a really tough. It's not an easy one for you fight Yolanda. because Jessica Andraj is used to bigger girls mm-hmm. hitting her. She used to be a bantamweight, mm-hmm. right? One thirty-five er. Yeah, but also Yuana is not a small girl. She's also five seven. Um, she's she's long, um, and I think in my heart it's always going to be Yuana. She's my favorite fighter, um, but I don't think this will be an easy one for her. Yeah. Final pick, it's going to be close, but I say Joanna. Yeah, I say Joanna too, but you're right. Like, I feel like, you know, Joanna does those like multiple, like peppering six shots. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not going to knock you out. It's just peppering, right? But But Jessica, with that one, just one loop, she just throws a bomb. So what? You know, remember when um, Joanna fought Claudia the second time, Claudia Mm -hmm. Gadelia? She lost the first round. It oh, was very striking scary. Striking wise, but she what actually I, lost. But what I like about Ioana is that she can come from behind. She is not a girl who psychologically breaks down even if she's trailing two rounds. She's somebody who can, you know, she's such a pro that way. And that stamina too. She doesn't Yeah, get she can go five rounds and come back the last three and I have faith in her and I hope that she wins it. 
but yeah, Jessica, if you put their arms next to each other, one looks like a twig, let's be honest, and the yeah. other one looks like a fucking, I don't know, what are those ropes you use? Those uh, sailor ropes? Those she has thick arms. She has huge arms. Yeah, she's a she's a strong girl, too. Um, And then, we got some, uh, the main cards are actually really good. We have a welterweight fight between Damian Maya and Jorge Masvidal, who just knocked out Cowboy. Uh, You know, right? I... And, yeah. Yeah. I... When it comes to Damian Maya, I still remember that time. I think it was a fight in like the Middle East. Yes, you think he's hot. No, I no, know. no, no, no. Oh, that you and your sister are I like, just, he's I so always, fucking hot. For so long, I just associated him with always like relying on his jiu-jitsu. And I, I kind of didn't have as much respect for him in like his earlier years in the in the UFC. Because, you know, if it came to stand up, it was just over, right? But he has come leaps and bounds and is undeniably fucking amazing now. So for the first time, I'm going to actually choose. For the first time, I'm going to choose Damian Maya. Wow, and that's a very good pick. Although I really do, I like I like Masvidal a lot. I mean, but Damian Maya last here's the last six fights took out Carlos Condit, Matt the, Brown, Gunnar Nelson, Crazy. Neil Magny, Ryan Lafleur. It's just like what? Like how could I have denied him for that long? You know? Yeah, it's. He's proven his worth time and time again. I'm just the idiot who never saw it. And I it was based on like two fights that I just wasn't impressed with. And then yeah. it But it's like over. he came back to his BJJ roots. Because for a while he was trying to stand up with people. Because I remember him doing a Mark Munoz fight where he like. He but he's also not up. a chump anymore on his feet. He's not. But he also just knows. It's it's weird. He just take people on the, takes people on the ground that can't get up. It's ridiculous. Masvidal is very dangerous though. If he can keep it standing up. Uh, yeah. So then you have Damien for that one. Uh, so featherweight fight, uh, we have Frankie Edgar versus Yair Rodriguez. Oh, we talked about this. Yair just came off killing uh, another legend, BJ Penn. Which doesn't really... I mean, it doesn't really say much. But yeah, still. I mean, I would have loved to see Yair when BJ was at his peak. Very different. Um, uh, Edgar just uh, beat uh, Jeremy Stevens by decision, but lost to Jose before that. I know, but Frankie Edgar is one of those guys who's just so sturdy, and um, I it's hard for me to imagine him losing to Yair. I mean, I'm not discounting Yair's like talent. He's obviously very good, and he's young, and he's you know representing a country. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna. Uh, it's fuck. a tough one, but because the thing I'm just visualizing right now, like Frankie might be that guy just knows how to take him down. You know. Because no one really tries to take a year. They're like, oh, this guy can do stand-up. And they try to kind of, like, fight him at his game. I mean, his last couple of fights, um, Yair were, what is it? BJ Penn, Alex Carceres, going to stand up. Andre Feely, going to stand uh -huh. up. And then Dan Hooker, BJJ guy. And Charles Rosa, stand up. So yeah. it's like he, they kind of feed him these people that stand up. And you're finally getting a wrestler that grinds it out. I'm going to think about it a little longer. But my money is on Frankie. Boom. Uh, and then right after that, we have a, a flyweight fight between Henry Cejudo and Sergio Ooh, Pettis. This one's going to be good. But I have Henry um, all the way. Wait, I know, but Cejudo lost his last fight, right? Yeah, he lost his um, last fight, but his last fight was against Joseph Benavides. The fight before that was Demetrius Johnson. Oh, I know. I remember the, the DJ fight. Who did um, Sergio Pettis um He's on fight? a three-fight win streak, uh, John Moraga, uh, some other dude, and then Chris Carcero. I'm gonna Henry Cejudo needs this. I know that he's going to he's gonna really come out. Yeah, he's gonna, he's come, gonna out. come out. He really, really needs this win. So I'm gonna say Henry Cejudo. And then the one, uh, another fight on the preliminary card, uh, the main event for that is Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier. That's oh very, my god, it's a good free fight. That on FX. is probably going to be my fight of the night. Uh, Dustin. I love Dustin Poirier. I also really love eddie alvarez i can't believe he's back and i hope that he's come back strong from that conor mcgregor connor loss. picked him apart and wow. i know and it was so sad reading what he wrote on instagram right after how he was really disappointed in himself and he was it was heartbreaking so um i oh god unfortunately my money is on poye nice me too even though it's like you just want Eddie to get that win. Yeah, you do. But Dustin, too, he's been such a journeyman. You're like, just give him his chance. Yeah. Uh, so those are like the big fights, I would say, uh, for UFC 211. Um, and you predicted correctly also on another fight this past weekend, obviously, Canelo. I mean, come on. I mean, Chavez Jr. Come I wa on. I watched the highlights. Like, dude, you're so slow. <laughs> dude, that was just a complete mismatch. Maybe, you know, there is a part of you that says, will it happen? 
will he be his father for one night, you know? And no. But the only I read soon after that the Floyd Mayweather and the Conor McGregor fight is now not going to happen because of the Triple G and um, Canelo fight in September. So what? They think that's going to counter? I mean, I say they still do it. No, they're not going to do it anymore. So they're waiting for next year's Cinco de Mayo? (laughs) No, no, no. Triple G is. So Triple G is fighting Canelo. That had already been pre- Yeah. But I guess that gets in the way of the Conor McGregor fight, so it's not going to happen. Oh, damn. That would have been a good, you know, season for boxing. <laughs> Dude, I think boxing's come making a comeback. It is. I mean, it never enough. really went away. You still have, like, very exciting fights, like the Joshua Klitschko fight. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. That was, I told you that, that was fun. That was a fun. really good fight. You're like, they keep knocking each other down. It's like a movie. They, it's like Rocky. Over and over again. They both look good. They, it, didn't, it didn't feel like a heavyweight fight. It so didn't, fast. Yeah. Those guys were really in good shape. I had a lot of fun watching that. Sorry for Panettiere. Is that her name? Panettiere? Hayden Panettiere. Panettiere. Are they yeah. still together? Married? Yeah, they have. I think she's pregnant again. Damn, that's a big guy to get pregnant by. Yeah, it's going to be guy's babies. huge. All right, guys. Uh, that's our show. Uh, make sure you follow us on Tiger Belly on Instagram, at Tiger Belly, on Twitter, at the Tiger Belly, And email us any questions or concerns or whatever you want to do at thetigerbelly at gmail.com. And you can send us packages gifts uh kalilo loves hats she no likes, more hats okay please. no more, hat. no we more do, hats we do we do have like 70 hats no um, no no we have 350 hats okay let's change it up so i can put something else in people's heads that want to just be nice and yeah. send something anything else that just top your head scarves ascot scarves <laughs> oh i love ascots yeah okay we'll send george ascot scarves please i would we'll, say harmless harvest coconut water but then the plastics i'm getting just too many plastics i can't deal with it okay coconut waters yeah so if you can give it to me in like in your hand and your hand just show nice. up we'll send you the address uh for george get him ascot uh scarves and also just any kind of seeds he can plant like tomatoes or was that one kid sent you tomato seeds yeah yeah so ridiculous shout out to him uh Oops. yeah and it's, fine uh send J- bobby some uh dream water powder uh and you can send all those items to us at 1626 north wilcox avenue number 161 hollywood california 90028 so send us some packages Boom. also just a reminder for everyone uh the podcast you're listening to right now just a reminder of the schedule wednesday audio comes out on wednesday and there's a new date for the video on youtube and that is every thursday Ooh, a day earlier than usual um and you can check that out at youtube.com <clears throat> slash tiger belly slash tiger belly i didn't know if it was the tiger belly or slash tiger belly uh you can follow Kalil on all social media at calamity k and george on whatever you can follow yeah, on instagram but who yeah i won't get any followers from this one <laughs> <laughs> george under search couple he likes drag a lot okay uh bye guys See.